Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. In this video we're going to discuss how to put sound into our videos. Now the game is plays fine. The game plays with high scores, it plays with scores, we got our ball that bounces around, but it would be nice to have some sound in this video game that we have. So we're going to have a look at sounds. So I'm going to select my ball sprite just like this and then I'm going to come up here and click the sounds tab. And what you'll notice is that the sound comes preloaded with a, with a, or the sprite comes preloaded with a sound. Sometimes they come preloaded with multiple sounds. And this sound is a fairly straightforward sound. If we click on it, it's not going to, oh, I have to hit the play button. Here we go. This is the popping sound. We get a little popping sound. That's going to be useful in my game. I'm going to be able to put that in into a number of places. I think that's going to be useful when the ball bounces around and hits the edges. So I'm going to show you how we're going to put that in. This one's going to be a little complicated for putting in when it hits the edges. So we're going to come to code. Nicely. And we currently have this if on edge bounce. The problem is if we just try to take that sound and we go to sounds and if we go let's see here they have whoop, they've changed the code a little bit and if we throw in start sound pop we're going to end up with a bit of a problem if we just throw that in there we just throw that in there and then we play the game all right now we get the continual popping sound when we throw that in there because it's going to play that sound every time the program loops so you're hearing that sound as fast as the program can loop so what we need to do is find a way to slow this down a bit so and we only want it to play if it's on the edge so we're going to have to make a bit of a change in our coding so we're going to go to control and for this one we're going to bring in another if then and it's going to be a little moving around of code to do i want to take this if and i want to stuff it right in here so and then we're going to have to take a whole bunch below and we're going to have to tack it like that and then we're going to have to take ooh, this is a lot of movement just for this Okay, to get that pop to work, we're going to have to make a decision structure. So I've moved all that code around. You can see how the code was moved. You can stop it and remove it around just so that if sits just on top of the other if. There's a lot of moving of code. If you want to move code, you just have to grab it from the, from the top that you want to move. And then you can put it nicely back in place. So we need an if statement here. So we're going to go if touching edge. It will check if it's on edge and it'll bounce. And then, oops, I put that back in the wrong place, right there. And then it will start the sound pop. So let's try that again. Now, oops, I missed. Only when that ball touches the edge do we get our popping noise. When it touches the paddle, it doesn't. When it hits the bottom, it does not. Now that's probably the most com one of the most complicated sounds we'll put in because of where it is. Um, now we can add other noises to our ball. So to add other noises to our ball, I'm going to go back to the sounds. And there's a sound library. So if we come right down here, there's a sound library. So we can choose sound. It'll bring up all sorts of sounds. You can see tons. Tons and tons of sounds. Sometimes it takes people a while to go through to find what they like, but I already know what I'm looking for here. I'm going to look for one of the world's most annoying sounds, and that is the boing sound. Oh yeah, great sound. So I'm going to use that, and I've added that to my ball as well. We're going to end up with all sorts of sounds on our ball, because really it's the ball that's going to interact with other parts of the games. So to put this in is going to be much, much easier. So we're going to go to the code, and if touching paddle, we got a point in direction, we've got a next costume. And then what I'm just going to do is going to go to the sounds, and we're going to put in a start sound boing. So now every time it touches the paddle we're going to get a boing sound. Boing. 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 So we got our boings and our popping sounds. This one was much easier to put in because it was already inside the if statement. It's just the way we built the game earlier with the bounce that required us to add this extra if. Now, something else you could do is you could try to put in background music. Now, background music is going to uh, run into a particular problem. Um, if we try to throw it in the main part of the game, we're going to run into exactly the same problem as we did with the start sound. It's just going to restart continually. So what we're going to do in order to put in some background music is we're going to start a brand new 
when clicked. So the background music will work on its own. And um, we're going to add into that, we are going to put in a forever loop. And then I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that we're going to work with a particular sound. So let's go back to the ball sounds. And now we're going to pick some background music. And oh, let's go find something here. I think I know what I want. Let's have a look here. That one's not bad. Ooh, let's take that one. So this one's called Dance Celebrate, I believe. It's a fairly loud sound. I'm going to show you how we're going to be able to knock the sound down a bit. Okay, that's the background sound that I'm going to use for the background music. So if I go back to the code, and we just grab that sound, and we say, start sound dance celebrate we're going to run into the same problem that we ran into with the original popping sound here i'll show you here okay that doesn't work that doesn't work because as fast as this can loop it's trying to restart the sound so we're going to pull that out of here and there is this one here play dance celebrate until done so so what happens with this is when the game goes forever it starts playing dance celebrate now this loop would normally loop really fast but what this particular piece that says until done is is it's a waiting piece of code so it will stop this particular um, loop this particular forever loop from not looping until the sound is completely played and then once the sound completely played it loops and it plays the sound again so this background music loops over and over and over again if i was to take this and try to put it into our regular code we're going to have a bit of a problem so if i put it inside the forever code here what is going to happen is it's going to play the sound until done before the rest of the program moves which means we're going to end up with something that looks like this All right, you probably saw the move, the ball move, just a hair there. Basically what that is showing us is that particular block will pause the entire game until, um, until it completely loops, then it will run once and continually loop. So when you're going to have a long sound that you need to play until done, make sure it's looked after in its own little loop so that it can run by itself. So putting sounds is really easy. Just below this video, I'm going to make a list of different places where you can put the sound. I'll mention them here. Um, you know, you can have background sound like this. You can have a different sound or show up if you get the high score. You can have a different sound show up when you lose. Have a sound, different sound when you hit the bottom here. So four, five, or six sounds would be really quite good for this particular game. Again, you can put them all in pretty much off the ball for this pretty game. So you can have lots of different sounds here. You can mix different musics in. You can have different musics change at different scores. I'll let you see if you can figure that out. And then after this video, what I'm going to post is just a quick little project for you to take this single player game that you've built and turn it into a multiplayer game.